and this is a matter of Jennifer Wise and Jason Tyler. Both are here via Zoom. Uh, Mr. Vanden Heuvel is here on behalf of the plaintiff and Ms. Uh, Ball is on behalf of the defendant. Uh, this, this is the day and time set for further proceedings on the uh, defendant's motion uh, regarding parenting time. And uh, we, we were changing custody, I guess. We had a, a hearing back in March at which it was determined that there are allegations or an allegation that was made that if proven uh, would uh, constitute proper cause for consideration of the motion. Um, at this time, Ms. Ballas, is your motion. How do you want to proceed? Do you have an opening statement? Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, I, since we had a short discussion off the record, I would prefer if the referee would uh, narrow the issues specifically for today's hearing, if at all possible. But the reason why my client brought this motion was because of the child's health being affected due to the mother's um, willingness or other attitude towards making sure the child's allergy symptoms are adequately cared for and that the allergy protocol is followed by the mother. Um, we also had allegations about the tran transition time in the morning, um, which I think was not part of what the referee granted today's hearing for, uh, but that was also put forward in our motion that essentially the transition during the week times, which Miss Wise would show up for repeatedly late or unable to sometimes make the time within a half hour. Um, so I, I was hoping for the court to essentially state its direction for today's hearing so that I can make sure the testimony I take from my client is focused just on the issues that the referee would prefer to have reviewed and not make this uh, complete 12 factor uh, custody hearing. But I do think that the allegations presented uh, should be taken seriously by the court and considered since we're dealing with such a small child who can't always make her uh, health well known to either parent, um, but is entirely dependent on one parent or the other to make sure that this is being addressed and treated correctly. All right, and that's fine. Uh, and like I said, the proper cause element that I that I anticipated or that I based the uh, further hearing on was the allergy issue. That would open the door. It would then be incumbent upon you, though, to prove by uh, to prove that there is or is not an established custodial environment with one or both parents, and then provide proof uh, that I could plug into some or all of the twelve child custody factors um, if there was a. If there was an established custodial environment with both parents, the client would have to uh, prevail by clear and convincing evidence, if not uh, by preponderance of evidence. Okay. Utilizing all those, utilizing all those factors. The allergy issue is going to open the door, and I assume that it would fall under one factor, but I don't know about uh, being enough to carry the weight of the day on its own. Mr. Van and Ewell, do you have an opening uh, statement? Order? I do have one. Um sidebar with the court. I don't know if opposing counsel to save time would like to, to uh, stipulate to the ECE being joint physical. Um, that's up to opposing counsel, of course. I haven't talked about that with her, but do you stipulate to that or not? I would say there is an established custodial environment with both parents. Okay. So the parties, the, the main issue here, they have a daughter who is um, has severe allergy issues that go with both dust mites, pet dander, um, and I'm gonna look at, and I'm gonna bring exhibits about this too. Uh, and so that, and they have, she has other ragweed uh, allergies as well. So your, your basic um, dust, dust mites, ragweed. Um, she has followed, you're gonna hear testimony today that she's in fact followed the doctor's um, orders and recommendations and have um, and have imp excuse me implemented those in her house. Um, I don't think there is a change of circumstance here. The dates which I think you need to be the court needs to be watching was on 315, March 15 of 21 was a diagnosis of allergies, ragweed, dust mites. You're going to see testimony and exhibits about that. 
on 7-21-21 was the last order entered by this court regarding transportation. The parties, as we have the parties that stipulated, have always exercised 50-50 parenting time. And so I would argue that there is not um, any sort of um, clear and convincing evidence that there has been a change of circumstances in this case whatsoever, given the 31521 and then 721 is our last order. So this diagnosis was known well ahead of the last change the party stipulated and agreed to. And there is really, both parties are aware of the doctor's orders. There's no real change of circumstance here. Um, I don't, I think you're also gonna hear testimony that dad has had uh, no access to the home for the last five years. So I think he's in a poor position to gauge what does and doesn't go on in mom's house um, in any way, shape or form and that this is basically a uh, frivolous filing. Thank you. All right, Ms. Ballas, uh, go to the first witness. I just wanted to briefly rebut that there was no frivolousness in my bringing this motion. Okay. Uh, yes, I would like to call Mr. Tyler. Um, when did you become aware that he had a potential allergic reaction to things? That'd be just prior to the allergy test, which was on 31521. I believe it was January 22nd of 2021 when she had her first reaction. Okay. And um, what type of symptoms did she have? She had uh, like blistering on her lip. Her tongue was itchy. And then that led to like blisters or hives on the skin. That's when I took her to the ER. Okay. Um, did you communicate that with Miss Wise at the time? Yes, immediately. Okay. Uh, so the emergency room, what was their... Uh, what was their analysis at that time? Well, at first they weren't aware. So they gave her uh, administer Benadryl to try to reduce the hives that are spread across the whole entire body, upper neck, her face, everywhere. And then uh, she puked that stuff up. So they administered three attempts an IV to put the medication in. And as soon as the medication was administered, uh, the hives, you could almost see them go away. And then that's when they recommended we go see an allergy specialist. Okay. So this initially occurred in January, 2021. Is that accurate? Yeah, January 22nd, 2021. Okay, thank you. Were you aware whether she had had an allergic reaction at any time prior to that? No, ma'am. Was there any particular exposure that she had had at that time which led to this reaction in January? Uh, can you rephrase like any particular reaction prior to that date that would indicate she had a, yes. an allergy issue? No. Were you aware of anything before January no. 2021? No. Okay. No, ma'am. Uh, had Miss Wise ever communicated to you, uh, you know, this she gets itchy or that there's some other sort of rash going on? I can't explain before that January 2021 time. She had traditional issues that a young child would have with dry skin and things of that nature prior, but at that point we had no concern or intent to believe that it was anything serious. Okay. At that time in January 2021, what had been the parenting time schedule between you and Miss Wise? I believe it was seven on seven off at that point. Can you like be more specific? Oh, I don't have the, in the, in the original order, we had a five on three day parenting time schedule. I don't have the exact date, but at some point we went 50, 50. So I happen to believe during this reaction period, it was a 50, 50, seven days on seven days off. Okay. What school was your child attending at that point? Which is where? Uh, in my township or my County. Mockham County. Okay. Was this prior to the change that you guys had agreed to in Greenville? What change was prior? I, I, I guess, was this around the time that you and she had agreed to a Greenville school? Yes. So which came first? I don't have the date she, is, she started. Well, school started 831-21, if that's the date you're looking for. Okay. So August, and the reaction occurred in January. Correct. Okay. And the first referral that was made for an allergy specialist, do you know that? That came January 25th, 2021. Okay. Thank you. Um, I believe it was submitted as an earlier exhibit with our motion, but we did provide uh, to the court with our initial motion, the, and I think Mr. Bannon Hubel submitted it in his packet for today as well. So I'm going to try and share my screen with the court if I could. But which exhibit is it? Let's make sure it's been previously admitted. Okay. 
Right. Actually, if I could, I would like to use Mr. Van and Hubel's Exhibit D, um, which is an after visit summary dated March 15th, 2021. Uh, Mr. Tyler, are you familiar with this document? Yes, ma'am. Can you tell the court what it represents? Uh, it represents a list of her allergies, which are mainly the tree nuts, and then the dust, dust mite, and dog dander allergies. And then it also lists the protocols. Uh, in regards to preventing any allergy reactions within the home uh, when referring to the dust, dust mites, or dog dander allergies. And we are advised uh, to avoid all tree nuts if possible. And then it was recommended to avoid anything processed in a tree nut facility, but that was up to our discretion. Okay. Does your child have any um, rescue medication that's prescribed to her in case of an allergic reaction? Yes, she has EpiPens. Okay. Does she know how to use them? Uh, at six years old, she's aware, but has never had to administer one. They send practice pens and she's played with them. Okay. But no need has arisen for a rescue medication at this point? Not at this point. Okay. Um, do you give her any daily medication in your home? I do not. Okay. Um, can I ask you some questions about the protocols that you follow? Yes. Would you mind describing for me uh, the protocols that you follow? Well, I went with replacing all of the carpet other than the two bedrooms with laminate and wood flooring to reduce uh, the debris and dog dander and whatnot being stuck on the carpet. I put in an air tower in her bedroom with frequent filter changes, which are in excess of $50 per swap out. I've put a gate on the door to not allow the dog in the room. I frequently wash her bed, her bedding, her clothes, uh, I've had my furniture professionally cleaned. Uh, I have a robot vacuum that I set to clean the floors when we leave every day. I have an air handler with a filter that cleans the air. I have fresh air intake into my home. I have exhaust in my home, which takes air out as fresh air is being brought in. Then I have a unit on my wall that cycles the air through a filter almost 365 days a year. Okay. Uh, when did you start following these recommendations? The gate over the door was immediately when we found out that the dog dander was an issue to keep the dog out of the room. Uh, I've had the air tower prior and I've had the air filter, uh, air handler system prior and the fresh air intake and things of that nature prior. So, so you did the dog door, the, uh, the dog gate immediately, but immediately, immediately. Okay. And then the other things probably took some time. Correct. How much time do you think it took for you to get these uh, in place? Well, some of the things were already in place prior to knowing that she had the dust and dog mite allergy. But the gate went on immediately, the air tower went in her bedroom, purchased extra filters, things of that nature. Okay, um, I appreciate you testifying about that. I, if I could, I would like to share my screen again with a different exhibit, uh, which I submitted for today's hearing. Do you see the exhibit six, Mr. Tyler? I do. Okay, can you describe uh, what's hold, in hold those? Up. Oh, okay, hold on. Hold on just a my mistake. Work. All right, Mr. Tyler, have you had a chance to look at this Exhibit 6? I have. Do you know when you took these photos? Uh, within the last month. Okay. Um, can you tell us what's in the upper right-hand photo? The upper right-hand <laughs> photo is a picture of the laminate flooring that replaced the original linoleum and carpet in the home. And then it's an indication of my robot vacuum that monitors my floors while we're gone. And can you describe the bottom left-hand photo? The bottom left-hand photo is a picture of my daughter's uh, heat duct going into her room, indicating the cleanliness of the ductwork, which I forgot to mention I had cleaned at the time of knowing that she had uh, the dust and dog mite allergy, therefore not pumping what was in there into the airstream of the home. And the bottom right-hand photo in Exhibit 6? That's just another event within the home indicating that all the ductwork's clean. Okay, thank you. Uh, Your Honor, I would like to present this exhibit for acceptance and publication by the court as defendant's exhibit six. I have no objection, Your Honor. All right, I'll accept exhibit six, those three pictures it looks like. Thank you. Mr. Tyler, do you see these exhibits? I do. Can you tell me when the photographs were taken? Uh, the same time the last one, well, within a month ago. And where were they taken? Uh, the top left-hand corner is in my bedroom, that's a fresh air. Uh, or exhaust fan that exhausts the air out of the home. The picture on the top right is my wall unit that filters and circulates air 365, 24 seven. The bottom left-hand corner is a picture of my heat coil indicating that it's clean and not full of debris, dust, lint, dog hair, et cetera. 
And then the picture on the bottom right is the filter that protects the coil from being uh, plugged full of dust, dog mite, stuff, uh, things of that nature. Okay. And these were all taken around the same time? Correct. How long have these been in place in your home? Uh, for years. Can you be more specific? Well, the the picture in the top left-hand corner, that addition was put on before my daughter was born. So that's been in there for over seven years. And then the mini split in the top right-hand corner works as my air conditioner as well as an air cleaner. That's been in there for roughly four to five years. And then the air handle I've had in there since I've lived there for nine years. Okay. I would like to present these to the court for acceptance as defendants exhibit number seven. Any objection? Uh, voir dire. Sure. Um, <clears throat> just out of curiosity, how do you know what these things are on your Exhibit 7? Are you talking to me, sir? I am. How do I know what they are? Because I installed them. So are you in heating and cooling? That's correct. All right. And when we're all, are they, I don't see any dates on these pictures. Correct. You testified you took them within the last week. Yes, within the last, okay. And uh, so you do this day in and day out, this kind of work. Correct. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Did you uh, object to the admission of those photos in Exhibit 7? Um, <clears throat> I guess I'm wondering a little bit about relevance of his system. The allegations are somehow my client is not taken care of, and these photos don't address the central issue, which is, as the court has put it, we're saying this is about allergies, and my client is somehow not taking care of the, the child's allergies, but how is his system relevant to that? I guess to show that he is addressing the allergies uh, amid his allegations that she is not, I would find that they're relevant to that. Thank you, Your Honor. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so I'm assuming those are now accepted by the court and will be Correct. part of the court's uh, review for this case. Uh, I, if I could, I'd like to go back in my exhibit pile, which has some photographs of a child, the child's reaction on a specific date, which are labeled as exhibits four and five in my list. Okay. You have questions of your client about those then? Yes. Mr. Tyler, can you tell me when these photos were taken? March 28th of 2021 and March 29th of 2021. And who took the photographs? I believe I took these photographs. And did you exchange these photographs with anyone? Uh, yes, I did. With, with whom did you exchange them? My daughter's mother, Miss, Miss Wise. Okay. What was your concern when you took these photographs? My concerns were the allergic skin reaction she was having on her back on the left side, and then the issues of the rashes and bumps um, on her arm and her cheek on the right side. Okay, so can you describe the left-hand photo? The left-hand photo is indicative of a skin irritation caused by an allergic reaction of some sort. And what are we looking at here? You're looking at redness and blistering of her skin on her back. Okay, so that's the child's back. Correct. Kind of uh, maybe like one shoulder there. Yes, correct. Okay. And then so, so from one shoulder to the middle of her back. Yeah. You can see a little bit of the rash on the opposite shoulder as well. So there's a little bit of a shadow over it. Okay. What is in the upper right hand photo? That's a picture of a red bump on her arm. Okay. And the bottom right hand photo? That was another small bump that turned into like a larger uh, size rash, probably equivalent to the size of two fifty cent pieces. And what part of her body is this? That was on her left side, lower cheek, jawbone area. Okay. Uh, and you took these photos and exchanged them with Miss Wise. Correct. What was your response? Like, how did you treat this? Uh, well, I, re I, I took these pictures after receiving my daughter from her mother and asking her if she had seen them or if she was aware of them. And to follow protocol, it's just a warm bath and lotion. They uh, recommend uh, like a Eucerin type lotion to put on. So were you aware whether Ms. Wise had done anything like a bath with lotion or not? I'm not aware, no. Objection. What's the objection? The objection is how, does the, how can the witness know what my client has and has not done? She could have related no. to him, so it could be personal knowledge. 
Well, I guess that's the question that way, then I'll sustain the objection. Understood. Mr. Tyler, did Ms. Wise communicate to you whether she had given the child a bath? No, Your Honor. Or, no, ma'am. She didn't communicate one way or the other? No. Okay, so I'll withdraw my question. What was her response when you sent her these photos? Well, she indicates in the picture you can see those can't be bug bites. They come and go. Uh, and she says, no, wait, it has to be an allergic reaction. So she's essentially confirming your um, suspicion. Correct. That there was some allergic reaction. And you indicated earlier that you had just recently picked up the child from her mother. Is that true? Correct. Correct. Okay. So you took the photos soon after you got the child home? Correct. Yeah. At nighttime, ready to get in the bath. You can. It's indicative of 8.42 p.m. So it's in the evening. Okay. I would like the court to accept these as an exhibit for defendant uh, exhibit number four. Why do you again, please? Sure. Uh, Mr. Uh, Tyler, um, this looks like, is this part of a text stream of messages and pictures? Yes, sir. And I'm only seeing, is this just a part of that text stream? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, what was the rest of the discussion? I can't recall unless I go back in my archives and dig that information up. So how did you happen to have this? Because I snapshotted those pictures, which felt more important to me than the entire conversation, considering it's an issue with my daughter's allergic reactions. And um, this is the same. This is the same in the same period as she had gone to the doctor, correct? This is after she had visited the doctor and the allergy specialist. But this is the same. This is the same period of time, the same month, correct? Uh, yeah, that is correct. Okay. And had your daughter been having other reactions that month as well? She had the allergic reaction with the nuts. Uh, tell me about that. She had ate some candy. I'm, I'm, like any object other. To, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm going to object to the continuance of this questioning because this is about these particular photographs. If Mr. Bannon Hubel wants to cross-examine my client about exposure to nuts, he can do that by cross-examination. It's not relevant to the topic of this photo. All right, I'll overrule that. I mean, uh, there's nothing to indicate just by looking at the photo without a medical opinion what could have caused this redness if uh, he wants to explore other options for the redness uh, other than what you've uh, questioned your client about. I think he has the right to do that, especially with the remoteness in time. This is two years ago and the fact that the text stream is incomplete. So I'll overrule that judgment. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, tell me about the nut reaction. Tell me what happened. She had had some candy like any other ordinary day, and after an hour or so, came to me and said, hey, Dad, my tongue is itchy. I didn't think much of it, considering I had no reason to believe she was allergic to anything. Uh, she got tired. She laid down for a nap, woke up within an hour or so, and I picked her up, and her shirt rose up on her stomach, and I noticed her skin blistering, and that's when I took her to the ER. Um, and what, when, what date was that? That was January 22nd, 2021. All right. And um, has she been exposed to nuts or things since? Not in my care, no. All right. And so do you did you do you have any medical diagnosis about what this reaction was about? This particular reaction, no. Is she she is allergic to um, ragweed, correct? Correct. And to nuts. And specific dust. tree nuts. And dust mites. Correct. And dog dander. Correct. Do you have a dog, sir? I do. Objection. Well, I guess, did he have a dog on this date? Thank you. Did you, did you have a dog on this date? Correct. All right. And she could have had contact with this dog, I assume? One could assume. All right. I would move that, you know, I don't know that these are probative one way or the other. I would object to their admittance at this time. I guess I have a question, Mr. Uh, Mr. <clears throat> uh, Tyler, uh, what, what time did you uh, exchange the child that day? Exchanges are at four o'clock. All right, so, and then you took the pictures at, all three pictures at 8.42 or just the one or what? Uh, the one on the left was at 8.42 p.m. and then the other two were at 7.08 p.m. All right, so three, four, five hours after the exchange, right? Correct. 
All right. And um, I guess the uh, the first two, the back and the and the arm being March, it may have been cold. Uh, she may have had a shirt on, and you may not have seen those. But the one on the cheek, you certainly that certainly should have been evident right at the time of the exchange. Uh, correct. The picture on the right was on March 29th, the day after I realized she had the issues on her back, which were March 28th. But yes, I, I, I took that picture uh, on the right and sent that to her mother as well when I realized she was having an issue with the side of her face. All right, so you exchanged on the 28th, the at uh, 4 p.m. The first picture on the 28th was at 8.42, so almost five hours later. Uh, I'm going to find that these uh, pictures are not relevant. There's no medical diagnosis about what led to the the uh, the bumps or rashes in those pictures, and uh, there, there's there's so remote in time, two years, like I said, and the fact that the exchange was almost five hours before the first picture was taken. Um, those those reactions could have come from mom's house. They could have come from dad's house in those intervening five hours, uh, especially if he has a dog and she's allergic to dogs. There's just no reason to believe that. Uh, that those are relevant to the situation that we're deciding today. So exhibit four would be uh, would be denied. Thank you, Your Honor. As such, I would also withdraw <coughs> the request for exhibit five, essentially, uh, which I was going to follow up with, but it essentially is this uh, a similar sort of screenshot and text uh, about the child's condition. Um, so if the exhibit four is denied, I'm gonna make the assumption that exhibit five is denied. Um, but the court has those in case um, the court wants to consider them. Um, I won't look at them unless you propose it as an exhibit, so. All right, well, I'll I'll do my best here. Mr. Tyler, can you review the exhibit five, which I have a copy of for you? Do what with it now? Can you review that exhibit? Yeah, I have it in front of me on paper. Okay. Do you remember having taken these photos? Uh, her mother took these photos. I did not take them. Okay. And she apparently sent them to you as a screenshot. Correct. And well, in, in, a, in a text thread. Okay. What what else was happening at the time of this? Do you remember? Uh, I, I I don't know how to answer that question. I mean, she, my daughter was in her mother was in her within her mother's care, and she noticed these issues on her daughter and sent them to me. Okay. Do you remember your response or any other treatment that happened because of these photos? I don't recall her mother applying any treatment. And I can recall an incident where this issue arose when she came back to my house and it was treated with the userin lotion and it disappeared while in my care. Okay, no further questions, but I would like to have the court admit this as defendant's exhibit five. So I do have some idea for this witness again on these yeah. photos. So you took these photos after these photos were taken by Jennifer at, uh, Weiss after the child was returned to her, correct? While in her care. While in her care. So, okay, so the child was in her care and she took these photos, correct? Correct. Okay, and she sent them to you, correct? Correct. And she communicated, obviously, with you. Is this part of a text conversation? Correct. Is it all the same time frame? It is not the same time frame. All right. So what's not our what's the time frames then for these photos? Well, they're dated. This one's October 17, 2021. The other ones were March 28th and March 29th of 2021. I only see October 17, 2021 on exhibit five. Correct. Exhibit four, which indicated other uh, allergy reaction issues were dated March 28th and 29th okay. of 2021. So all these photos on exhibit five are October 17 or are not? They're on October 17, 2021. All four photos? All four. Okay. And so your daughter is in Jenny Weiss's care. She sends photos and asks you, when did you see those marks? And then, she, and did you respond to that? Uh, it appears I didn't in this uh, text thread, no. Okay. And then she asked you, and you remember how high her fever was? What is she talking about? Uh, uh, talking about a fever. Oh, yeah, that's obvious. But give me a little more context to that. 
Well, she was asking me if I remember how high her fever was. What fever? I can't recollect because there's no indication to when that fever was. She doesn't indicate that, and I can't recall. So okay. that could have been from a week so ago. We it could have been from two weeks ago. That me and me and vulva fever. We don't know if they this occurred during your care or her care. Um, correct. One could say that. Thank you. I move to uh, strike this exhibit, Your Honor. I would agree for some of the same rationale that uh, it's just the authenticity and uh, the probative value is just uh, very suspect due to the, the, the time frame a year and a half ago those pictures were taken, the fact that it's an incomplete text stream, and uh, the, the defendant, Mr. Tyler, doesn't, doesn't remember the totality I, of the conversation. For the record, I'd like to object to these ex uh, the exclusion of these exhibits. If the concern is that the child's allergy condition is not being treated. These are evidence to show that over a period of time, while in the mother's care, the child's condition worsens and as such allows us to re-examine whether the schedule of shared week on week off custody during the summer time, during the school year is still in the child's best interest. Pictures are too old uh, and there's not enough uh, context around the conversation and the pictures, and, and actually, it sounds like Ms. Weiss was uh, consulting with Mr. Tyler, trying to you know figure something out. They were co-parenting, and uh, um, maybe that's broken down in the last year and a half. Maybe it hasn't, but at, at this point, those just aren't probative of the of the issue before the court today, and they would not be accepted. Thank you, Your Honor. I still have some uh, remaining questions for my client, uh, Mr. Mr. Tyler, have you had any information from the mother about her current treatment of your child uh, with medication? Yes. And what has she told you? She told me March 7th, the day after our first hearing that she administers Zyrtec to her every day. Do you have any other way of showing that aside from what Ms. Wise told you? That was a phone conversation. That's the first time I've heard of it. Are you concerned about daily use of Zyrtec by your daughter? I am. For what reason? I don't have to administer my daughter with Zyrtec or any sort of aller allergy medication to control her symptoms within my home or my care. Would there be an adverse reaction if your child were to have a rescue medication administered while Zyrtec was being taken? It's a possibility. Would you have access to Zyrtec in your home? I happen to believe I have Zyrtec in my home for my own personal use but I haven't used that stuff in years. It's just in the medicine cabinet like any other old medication you leave in there. Would there be an adverse reaction if your child had a second dose of Zyrtec in the same day? Yes, I would most certainly believe so. That stuff was labeled for certain ages and certain doses. So in theory, it's possible for you to have given your child a second dose of Zyrtec while being unaware that Ms. Wise was using it on a regular basis. Correct. I guess I object to this that we don't have testimony under underlying did or did or was or was there a dose when were the two when were the doses taken none of the foundation is present in this line of question i'm not trying to get an exhibit placed on the record i'm trying to essentially show that this would be a risk for the child because there's this lack of communication by miss wise on how she's treating the child's allergy symptoms all right well first you'd have to establish what type of zyrtec is being used is it some adult dose or a children's dose or an infant's dose or or whatever i, I don't know what types of Zyrtec exist, I've heard of it. And the um, and then also uh, the date that he would have given the child Zyrtec, whether he had reason to believe that the mother gave the child Zyrtec on that date, whether Zyrtec is potentially uh, harmful in multiple doses. You know, there's so much, such a void of information leading to these questions. I mean, you need, I, I would sustain the objection for those reasons. Thank you, Your Honor. Have you found out recently whether or not Ms. Wise still has animals in the home? Yes. How did you find that out? Uh, this prior Sunday evening, I believe was April 9th, my daughter had told me that the dog was back in the home. This would be Easter, Easter evening. I don't know what the relevance, I guess I'm gonna object. Um, we've established that there is a dog at the residence of Mr. Um, Tyler. I guess if there's a dog in the other residence, relevance. How does this make it more anything more or less probable? Are you aware whether Miss Wise had more than one animal in the home? 
Say that again. Did you have a hold on? Do you have a, a response to the objection before you move on? Okay. I'll respond to the objection. I believe it's relevant because there's been testimony that Mr. Tyler is essentially ignoring an allergy protocol. And that seems to have been a big part of Mr. Bannon Hubel's oral argument in the earlier motions is that Mr. Tyler seems to ignore these things by owning a pet. Um, I think it's relevant if Mr. Bannon Hubel wants to continue to say that Mr. Tyler's not paying attention to these things uh, when the conditions in the mother's home are seriously at issue. All right. Uh, I guess I would agree. I'll, I'll overrule the objection. I guess, you know, if we're talking about different dogs, different types of dogs that have different uh, hypoallergenic qualities, if, if we're getting into that conversation, then it would be relevant for that purpose. Um, so I, I guess, again, need to know more about it. Um, but I'll overrule the objection and allow you to, to pursue that line of question. Thank you, Your Honor. I appreciate it. Would, um, would you know where your daughter's been sleeping while she's in her mother's care? As of recently, she's been sharing a bed with her mother in uh, in, a, in a bedroom. Is there a dog present? I guess uh, I'm going to object again. What's the? How does he know this when he doesn't reside with the mother? Ms. Ballas? Can Mr. Van Hubel state his objection more specifically? I think it's probably a hearsay objection. Yes, Your Honor. Has anyone directly told you? Or is this something you learned through your daughter? To my daughter. Then I'll withdraw the question. All right. Thank you. I don't want to tell you one the tabs. Can you set them for you? These guys right here. We just have actual tabs. I can. Are you? Uh, have you had any access to Miss Wise's home since uh, the beginning of this proceeding? Currently, I have not. Okay. I have no other questions of my witness at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I do have some questions for this uh, witness. I'm going to flip to our exhibit, I think D, which we talked about. Um, and I'm going to have you turn to page two of nine of that exhibit. There I'm is. Sorry, uh, are the my client doesn't have a copy of these. So if if you could pause for a moment, because I, I've only just gotten the email from Mr. Van and Hubel with his exhibits. Um, this so I have to visit summary again, right? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. This is the after visit summary. I think we already we've gone. We've admitted it, but um, I'm just going to describe it. Do you believe your child is up to date on her all her immunizations? I don't believe she is. I believe okay. she's lacking her flu vaccination. All right, and uh, but the general um, vaccination. Have you looked at? Have you seen the page two yet? Or are you still working on that? Yeah, I don't have no page in front of me. So we're on exhibit D from Mr. Bannon Hubel's email. I can put that up on the um, These are immunization lists. It looks like she's got a pretty extensive immunization list. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it appears so correct. And have you both participated or she's mainly taking the child to these immunizations? Tell me about we that. We both participate. Okay. Does she carry EpiPens to the best of your knowledge? Jennifer, yes. Yes, okay. The best of my Perfect. knowledge. And um, I I'm going to call, call you a two page four. I appreciate the court's help with this, so I'm not logged in. Um, and I'm going to call you down to instruction seven. Can you read that, please? It says, give Zyrtec, uh, then quotations, the scientific name, five milliliter daily as needed for runny or itchy nose. Okay. Would you read uh, paragraph eight, please? Or she, may need, she may need Zyrtec daily during fall pollen season, August through first deep freeze. Okay. So your initial testimony that this was an unknown medication is incorrect or you just didn't know? I was I'm, unaware that she was administering Zyrtec to my daughter. I'm objecting on the basis of the nature of the question Mr. Van and Hubel asked. Uh, he is essentially mischaracterizing the earlier testimony of Mr. Tyler. I don't think, I my, I don't think my client said that this was an unknown medication. 
that he was unknown, un was unaware that Mr. I believe he said he had Zyrtec, but somehow that he didn't know that this was something that was part of the treatment, potential course of treatment. I'm going to object again. This mischaracterizes the earlier testimony of Mr. Tyler and is also argumentative. All right, well, I don't think it's argumentative, but without going back in time, my recollection of the testimony was is that Mr. Tyler was um, unaware that Ms. Wise was giving Zyrtec daily. I don't know that he said he was unaware of the medication itself or maybe the need for the medication, but I don't think, or I think his testimony um, what, what I got from it was that he didn't know that Liz Wise was giving it on a daily basis. So Thank you. Um, with that clarification, I don't know that I need to uh, uh, overrule or sustain the objection, but that's my recollection of the testimony. And I, and I guess I don't think this is contrary to that. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. So um, do you give her Zyrtec too? I do not. You never give her Zyrtec? I do not. Okay. So there's probably no real conflict so far, correct? Conflict of what sorts? Your earlier concern was I might accidentally give it to her, but your your statement just now, your what you just testified is I I don't ever give this to her. So that really wasn't an issue at the time. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, if you're indicating as a to a double dose of Zyrtec, no. So you're just to back it up, one more click here. You're saying you never give it to her. Your earlier testimony, I was worried about a double dose, correct? Correct. But there's never been an issue with that, correct? Correct. All right. How old is your daughter? She's soon to be seven. Seven. soon to be seven. Okay. She is also allergic to mold, is that correct? Correct. Air quality index can also be a concern, correct? Air index? You mean airborne air pathogens? Index. In other words, airborne pathogens. Yes, those can be of a factor to someone with allergy issues. Okay. And smoking as well, correct? I don't believe smoking is good for anyone. But it's an issue for your daughter with someone with asthma, is that correct? Uh, I don't believe my daughter has asthma. All right, but do you believe the uh, smoking is harmful, yes or no? I would believe smoking is harmful, yes. And it would be harmful, especially to a daughter like yours, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Does the uh, dog sometimes ride in the car with you and your daughter, your dog? She has on occasions. What breed is that dog, please? She's a chocolate lab. All right, and do you, um, have you guys managed to cooperate in co-parenting this child? In other words, have you communicated quite frequently with uh, my client? We communicate on a frequent basis. Okay, thank you. That you're saying that you do, correct? Correct. Do you have, you filed this motion saying there's been some denigration in your child's condition or change mainly due, initially you said, to allergies. What, uh, do you have any medical opinion backing up your thought that somehow the condition of this child has changed? Do, do I have a medical opinion in regards to my daughter's condition being changed? Yes. I'm going to object at this point because Mr. Vandenhubel seems to be asking for something that my client does not have personal knowledge of and would call for a more learned opinion on that subject. We both testified earlier or off camera to say essentially we only have our clients testifying today. So I'm not sure if Mr. Vandenhubel is going where this testimony will be leading us to. Okay. So the... Um... Defendant has filed a petition saying there's been a denigration in his child's condition. And I'm asking him first if he has any medical opinion to back that up. In other words, is there some, has, has he talked to a doctor? Has there, is there any documentation or papers? And I'm going to ask that next. But I, I'm asking, has there been any visits? I'll, I'll, I'll make it more clear. 
I, I can ask a couple foundation All right, questions. I'll, I'll sustain the objection then, and uh, okay. Mr. Van Eubel will be more uh, precise with this, with this yeah. question. This. Um, and I guess, are, are you giving him license to give uh, some hearsay testimony about what he may have heard from somebody then? No, I'm not. You're I'm, asking him for an I'm statement. asking him if he's get well, I mean, okay, I'll break it down. I'm going to ask him. Has the child, has there been any medical visits right. since the one I Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Have there been any medical visits with, uh, since the child's visits with the doctor on 3 8, 3 15 of 21? Has there been any, I mean, are you finished? Yeah. Have there been, yes, have there been any medical visits since 3 15 21? Yes. Okay. What dates would those be on? I don't have those specific dates, but she's had her okay. welfare checkups and stuff. Three and three eight of twenty three. Was there another medical visit? Three eight twenty three. Correct. So March eighth of two thousand twenty three. Correct. Not, not that I'm aware of. And we're just talking a few days, few weeks ago. Correct. 3823 would be correct. I've not taken her to the doctor that I can recall in the last couple of weeks. Um, all right. And so you just hear, but to just to refresh your memory, was your child, did your child go for an, any kind of infection this year to the doctor? I'm going to object because this is, I mean, it's assuming some fact, not in evidence at this point. Oh, I'm just asking. The question. I don't know if it assumes anything. He's asking the question if he has knowledge of the child went to a doctor's appointment. Yes, she yeah. had an ear infection. Oh. All right. That was this year? Yeah, that was recently. I recall her mother indicating she had an ear infection. Okay. And, um, but basically, okay, so I've asked the questions. Have you had, have you, do you have any evidence that your child's medical condition has degenerated evidence and being described evidence my personal opinion or doctor's certificate or doctors uh, yeah i think that's fair to ask any medical evidence that is doctor's opinion that says your client your child's condition has denigrated i have no doctor's or evidence since the date of her allergy testing no when was the last time that you were in my client's place of residence? I think this has been asked and answered. Correct, it has. So I would object to the answer being provided by my client as he's already answered this in direct testimony to me. I think. Um, so uh, the question was, if you had access to the mother's home in the last five years, the answer was no. This is okay, great. Uh, Perfect. Specific. But I have not been uh, inside uh, the home in the last five years. I've been to the residence uh, within the last five years, but not inside. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have no further um, questions, Your Honor. Uh, I have one. So, sir, uh, what have you observed on your own, by your own observation, that has caused you concern about your daughter's health condition related to her allergies? Well, the fact that she comes back with those rashes, skin conditions, runny noses, heavy congestion. Hold on. Hold on. None of that's in evidence. That's, this is all the first time I'm hearing this. There was, there was a couple of pictures of a couple of rashes from 2021. Correct. What's going on now? Uh, the stuffy nose, the congestion, things of that nature. When I pick her back up from her mother's residence. And I don't have those issues while she's within my home. Ms. Ballast, any other questions for your client? Nothing further related to the allergies. Thank you. Ben, do you have anything else for Mr. Tyler? I know, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Ballast, any other evidence? I have no other witnesses. Ben, do I have my client, Your Honor. All right. You Have you had a chance to listen to the testimony so far? I have. Okay. And we've uh, been talking about your daughter's condition, correct? Yes. Okay. And you had, has your, tell me about your child's condition in the last year. Has it significantly changed? No, it has not. 
can you describe kind of on a week to week how that how things go with your daughter? Um, sometimes she does get stuffy, runny nose, but sometimes it's a cold. Sometimes it's an ear infection. Sometimes, and I, we do have the proof that on the eighth, she had an upper respiratory infection. And that was two days after she came home from his house. And the ear infection was from when we came to, from his house also. And I took her to the doctor. Um, okay. Was that so, on um, 3-8? Of 23? Uh, 219 was when she had her ear infection and 38 was when she had an upper respiratory infection. Okay. And what was your, what was your understanding of what that respiratory infection was all about? Um, I'm assuming it was just normal kids catching a virus. Okay. At least that's what the doctor made it out to me. It wasn't from her allergies. It wasn't from a dog. It wasn't from dust. It wasn't from um, ragweed or any of her allergies. It was just kids get sick. Okay. Have you taken steps? Um, and I'm going to go over then um, exhibit E. Do you have exhibit E in front of you? Is this the last doctor visit that you're on 3A that you were talking about? Um, if I could request that the court share this exhibit as well. I don't think my clients had a chance to look at it. Can right. you read the first paragraph here? You want me to? Yes, please. Upper respiratory infection. She does have some redness in her left temporatic membrane, but no bulge or retraction. We did discuss the risk and benefits of antibiotics that it is best that we try to hold off on this. She will use her Zyrtec as well as some Mucinex or over-the-counter decongestant because she does have a little bit of congestion in her left lower posterior lobe. I would recommend a short course of steroids. I will give her prednisone weight base daily for three days. If the symptoms worsen in any way, she could return to the clinic. I took her in because, oops, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I took her in because she started having a runny nose and I wanted to make sure it wasn't because of allergies, because anytime he says she has a stuffy nose or anything, he just blames me and says it's because she has allergies. But obviously this time it was not, it was because she was actually sick. Okay. And did you have to follow up with another medical visit? Is this the only one? Nope. This is the only one. It cleared up on its own or with the medication. Move to exhi enter exhibit E. I do not object. All right. Exhibit E is accepted. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to, can you look at exhibit F for a minute? Yes. I'm on that. Do you have this in front of you, uh, Ms. Weiss? Yes, I do. Okay. So you see the recommendations on this page? From her doctor? Yes. Yes. Would you like me to read it? Um, yeah, you can read them. It says, hello, thanks for reaching out. Below are our typical re recommendations for dog allergen avoidance. Uh, I don't see that reading on my screen. I'm sorry. Oh, scroll up a little. I can. Yeah, as your, your question was first here, ma'am. Oh, do you want me to read my question? I don't know what you wanted to read. What do you want to read? Uh, the, he said the recommendation. Um, you can read um, the, the first paragraph, yes. Okay. After Piper did her allergy test and we found out that she was allergic to dogs, we were told that we didn't have to get rid of them, just keep her room dog free. Is there any way I can get that in writing? Thank you, Jennifer Weiss. Okay. And then to, to go back to the provider response. Okay. And this is from um, Sarah Baker. Okay. So what did she recommend? I would recommend the following. What did she recommend? I would recommend the following. Keeping dog out of patient's bedroom, keep pet in room with HEPA filter, bathe the dog one to two times a week and vacuum frequently. Okay. Can you tell me about what you've done in reaction to this recommendation? Well, before I had my mom take the dog, um, she wasn't allowed to be in the room. She wasn't allowed to be down by the room. Um, I vacuum, I dust, I, um, my daughter gives my other daughter, not Piper, my older daughter gives the dog a bath. Um, we have HEPA filter in the living room. We have HEPA filters in everybody's bedroom. Um, Piper has one sitting right next to her bed. Um, and I just try to avoid, I don't let the dog ride in my car. One time um, I had my dog in the car, but that was the other dog and she passed away. And so I had to take her to the vet. So that was the only time she was ever in the car. And do you keep the dog out of your, um, out of your daughter's bedroom? Yes. I moved for, and when was, when was this, when did you receive this recommendation that we're well, this was, just gone? This was originally what she told us um, when we were first diagnosed in um, March of 
2021, but I just asked this, um, I believe it was um, after our last, uh, the March 6th. So I think I asked the 7th or 8th of March. It's not showing, but I can. Okay. And I'm going to point you to exhibit G as in George, the way I move for admittance of exhibit uh, uh, F, Your Honor. Any objection? My only objection is that the exhibit itself is not dated, so it's difficult to tell what the actual time frame of the request was and the response. Oh, actually, it was March 13th of at 2.48 is when I asked. And hold on. It does say, oh, never mind. I'm sorry. It doesn't say that on my paper. I'm looking at the um, my health chart. Sorry, right. I guess the clarification of the date that I'll accept. Okay. I'm going to exhibit G as in George. Okay. Yep. Um, can you describe what this what this exhibit is about? Thank you. What was the date of this this visit? This was February nineteenth, two thousand twenty three. This was my birthday, and I got Piper early. Um, instead of the four p.m. pickup, I got her um, at nine a.m. And what happened? What 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 was the issue here? Um, Jason told me when we got into the car or when he was putting her in the car that she started having a cough on Saturday, which was the day before to, th um, on the 18th. And I said, okay, I'll keep an eye on it. And Piper and I went to um, my mom's and we had breakfast and then we went and picked up my, um, other children and cause it was my birthday. So we were going to go do something. And then we went, um, to lunch, um, at the depot in Grant. And Piper started complaining about how bad her ear hurt. And um, she was like starting to cry. And I asked her if she wanted to leave. And so we went to the Dollar General and got some um, pain medication, gave it to her. And then I asked her if she wanted to go back and try to have lunch. And so she did. And we had lunch. And then I took my other children home. And then I drove her to the Rockford um, Urgent Care. And that's when they looked into her ear and said that she had an ear infection. So below on the subjective part, um, it said she developed a cough and then this morning complained of ear pain. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and was that successfully resolved? There was no further follow-up? Um, yes, until the 8th of um, March when we okay. went back, we had the upper respiratory and infection. This was not allergic reaction, correct? Definitely not. It was an ear infection, nothing to do with her allergies. Thank you. Move for exhibit, uh, uh, move for an immense of exhibit G. Your Honor. I have no objection. All right. Exhibit G to accept it. Can you describe it, Ms. Weiss? This is Piper's bedroom. Next photo. This is also Piper's bedroom. Yeah. And next photo. Piper's bedroom again. Seems to be the same so photo. Is, it, is that correct? No, it's just <laughs> sorry. They're just different angles. And she has hardwood. Does she have hardwood floor? And then and that's, there's a rug that's out there. The I see. Room, that's the only room that we have carpet in. It's just not been replaced yet. But like we've talked about before, I'm moving hopefully by July. Okay, let's fill that out. Where are you moving to? Um, my mom is renting a home. Um, more towards Greenville. It's, it's still in Grant, but it's a little closer. And that's all hardwood floor and um, everyone would get to have their own bedroom. Okay, but this is Good. kind of speculative at this point. Is that correct? Um, I'm sorry to no. interrupt, but. No, it's um, confirmed. I mean, I haven't signed a lease yet because I have to wait till they move out. But yes, we are moving into that home. Okay, if I could, some more deer on that last exhibit. Pictures? Yes. Sure, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Van and Hubel, have you moved for its admission yet? No, I haven't. Okay. Uh, you did not state, Ms. Wise, when this photo was taken. This photo was taken within the last couple of weeks, but there's also another one that we had before in our previous motion the, from Tuesday. Who, who took the photo? Myself. Okay. Further no questions? questions. Um, I move for exhibit entrance of exhibit H. Any objection? No objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, exhibit I. Um, can you describe the photo, please? This is my bathroom. Okay. Next photo. And that's and that has hardwood floor. That has a that has a 
hard tile floor in it, correct? Yes, that's um, like the tie. I don't, a laminate, it's laminate. Okay, the next photo is your daughter's bedroom. Yep, this was before um, I hung up this the little tapestry that she just picked out within the last couple of weeks. Next photo. And the next photo is my kitchen. Okay, and you have tile floor in there too? Yes, I have um, laminate and hard, not hardwood. Yeah, laminate fake wood looking stuff um, throughout my whole house that Jason is aware of because he helped put some of it in. And I think it was 2017 when we redid the, took all the carpet out besides the bedroom. I'm going to move. I think we've talked about D year on our one. just as a matter of housekeeping to admit that. Good. Thank you. Good. We were talking initially a little bit about your daughter's condition and everything. Mm -hmm. Does she kind of go up and down? Is that how it goes with your daughter with things? With her allergies? Yes. Yes. Sometimes um, she has no symptoms and sometimes she just gets a runny nose or a, you know, a little cough, but um, it could either be a cold or it could be her allergies. It's, but yes, basically she just sometimes doesn't have anything. Sometimes she does, sometimes she doesn't. And generally speaking, do you try to keep things clean and hypoallergenic for her? Objection. Yeah. Objection, There's some, the objection? It's, that's sort of a vague question. I think, you know, the, whether she's keeping things clean, your cleanliness has been raised as an issue. And I'm asking her, what do you do? Well, you the, the question is vague. It doesn't get specific enough. Okay. All right. So what do you think? Thank you, Your Honor. What do you do to what do you do to maintain your home for the benefit uh, of your daughter? I dust. I we have we also have a um, robot va vacuum that goes off every day. Um, I vacuum her bedroom. I wash her sheets and bedding um, before she comes home. Um, I keep the dog away from her as much as possible, or especially her room. She doesn't, the dog doesn't go anywhere near her room. Um, I just do normal household chores. Um, I change the furnace filters. I bought filters to go in our registers to help filter that. Um, obviously I can't afford to put in a whole new, um, furnace system, um, to, too, I guess I'd like Jason has, but I'm, I'm only a single mom and I just can't afford a five or $6,000 unit to replace it. Okay. But you're, you're doing, you're doing the maintenance task then with the furnace to keep things as clean as you can. Yes. I, um, I like vacuum around it and like the vents and stuff of the, I don't, the furnace vents. I'm not really sure where, when you change the filters, I vacuum around there and make sure there's no dust or anything. In the last year, last year and a half as your daughter's since let's let's but i'm gonna ask a more precise question since your visit on 315 of 2021 has your daughter's condition significantly changed in any manner no it stayed the same has since 2020 let me ask more specifically this year has your daughter's condition stayed the same gone down gone up in severity or or been the same it's been about the same. Okay. Have you noticed any denigration in your daughter's health? No. Does your daughter play any sports or have anything outside activities? Um, right now she's in dance and she just got signed up for swim class in the last, I think, month. She's gone a couple of times now. Those are pretty athletic activities, yes? Yes. I mean, okay. So, and dance, what type of dance? Ballet. So she's doing the ballet exercises for that? Yep. Every Monday. How would you describe your daughter's health other than the allergy condition? She is very healthy. Other than, you know, once in a while having an ear infection and now that upper respiratory infection, but we normally don't have any problems with her health. And you've communicated this. You've talked with the child's father too, Mr. Tyler, I assume you keep in good contact. Yes. Um, I'm very communicative with him. Um, it doesn't seem to be so much the other way, but yes, I try to communicate pretty much everything that we have problems with, like with the doctors and stuff. 
Has he communicated other than filing this motion with that he was somehow concerned about your daughter? Um, he objection. This is a, a, a an attempt at getting a hearsay statement into evidence, and Mr. Bannon Hubel had a chance to ask us of my client when he was cross examining him. Um, to respond, there is no, there is uh, uh, communication between the parties in the case is not hearsay, um, and is a, a, a admission of a party opponent, and is clearly relevant. I would agree, Paul. It's not hearsay uh, based on um, that. Uh, Exception, the uh, admission of a party opponent. Um, and, uh, the objection to Thank you, Your Honor. Um, you can answer the question. Can you can you re-answer or ask it? I just want to make sure I answer correctly. Yeah. Since other than this instant filing, you know, the court filing for change of custody, has he communicated any concerns to you out of the ordinary? No. Say. No, sir. All right. That concludes my question, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Ballast, any other questions for your client? Um, not of my client, but I would, yeah, I would like to cross-examine Ms. Wise if I may. Mr. Daniel's client, yeah, go ahead. All right, thank you. Um, I had a couple questions for you about the um, the use of Zyrtec. When did when did that begin? Um, well, it says right in our paperwork that we should be using it, but we, him and I both tried other kinds like Benadryl and um, different kinds of, but she doesn't like them. And she doesn't like the liquid. And so as of maybe last summer, we started using the tech myself, not him. Obviously, he said he didn't um, when she needed it. And she doesn't like the liquid. So we just as of maybe three months ago, started using um, she can swallow the pill and it's children's Zyrtec. I can't remember if it's five milligrams. I think it's five milligrams. Do you happen to have a. Um a bottle or, I mean, like you said, children's, but it, I, I'm, I'm unclear as to like what doses are available and what uh, types of medicine this is. Can you make that more clear for the court? Um, you want to know, well, it's children's Zyrtec and I believe it's five milligrams, but I do not have it on me. Okay. You said this started somewhere last summer? Yes. Did you communicate that to Mr. Tyler at any time? Of course I did. So in his testimony that he found out after the March 6th hearing that you'd been giving the child Zyrtec daily, how would you respond? I don't to give that? it to her daily. I give it to her as needed. Okay. Uh, what about other skin reactions or other uh, allergic reactions that she may have? How do you treat those? Um, well, the one ex thing that you tried to get in, she actually had um, hand, foot, and mouth, and she missed a whole week of school for that. And when I was, when, so I just did what the doctor told me to do. And I gave them, I believe it was uh, a steroid cream, uh, but that was in so some, kind of, some kind of topical medication. Is that what you yes. mean? Yes, it was a steroid cream. Over the counter or a prescription? It was prescription. Okay. Do you happen to remember the name of that prescription? Um. Mm, no, I do not. That I can't remember. Okay. And when did that occur? That was in your, um, let me see. I got a list of the paperwork that you guys turned in. Your exhibit five, October 17th, she had hand, foot, and mouse. Was this ever communicated to Mr. Tyler? Uh, yeah, absolutely. He just, she didn't go to school for a week and he brings her to school for me. So yeah, he knew. After the March 6th hearing, um, it looks like you communicated to Dr. Baker about dogs. Mm -hmm. And that was in one of the exhibits presented by Mr. Vanden Hubel. How many dogs have been present in your house? Uh, since when? I guess I'm going to object because there's no time frame in that question. Since no, January no, 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 2020, no, no, no. I'll, I'll rephrase the question. Since January 2021, when the child's allergic reactions became known, how many dogs have you owned? We had two at the time. And one passed away. Do you have other friends or relationships with other people who have dogs? Well, my mom has a dog. Relevance. Relevance. This objection. I, I'd respond to this objection saying that this is how the child spends her time when she's with her mother is with other friends and relations of Miss Wise. And if the child is being exposed to a dog at home, but it's proper, then what else is she being exposed to in environments that Miss Wise can't control? No foundation fishing. Yeah, I would agree. That would be sustained. 
You did reach out though to the uh, child's doctor to say what the specific guidelines are on keeping a dog. Yes, but it was also in your original um, exhibits also on the same paperwork from 2021. I just was re ed, re getting re advice to make sure I was correct. I just wanted to make sure that that did happen after the March 6th hearing. Is that accurate? Yes. And your additional testimony about the ear infection and follow-up that also occurred after our initial pleadings had been filed. Is that correct? Uh, I don't know when the pleading was filed for the first one. And same thing with the March 8th of a rest respiratory infection that also occurred after the March 6th hearing. Is that correct? Yes. I don't believe the one on February 9th was after though. No, I know it wasn't, but it, you were aware of this court proceeding at the time that you checked out the child's ear infection. Um, I, 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 I don't I really know. Yeah. There's been an objection. Yeah, Mr. Van de Hubel argues that it's not uh, relevant. I would argue it is relevant because the mother's appearing to clean up her tracks, essentially, knowing that the potential for a change in parenting time is being evaluated by the court. She's essentially gone through all this effort to present an atmosphere that may not have existed before she was aware of this. In addition where's to your cleaning. That, where, where's your evidence that, uh, that a situation did exist prior to your motion? The only evidence you've shown me is from 2021, a couple of texts with some red marks on the child's skin. I would just like it noted for the record that this appears to be a course of conduct by the mother to make an appearance for the court, which may or may not be the, the case. Well, I totally reject that because there's no evidence that, that a, a situation existed that needed to be corrected. So that would be uh, overruled. I have no other questions of this witness. Have there been any allergic reaction to nuts with your child? Since the initial one? Yes. No, no, there has not. We have, Thank you. I believe that we, we have done a very well job of keeping her away from the nuts, which is ultimately the scary part of her allergies. Thank you. All right. And ma'am, uh, did I understand from your testimony that you're moving to Greenville soon? No, I'm still, it's going to still be in Grant. I still have oh. two other children in the Grant school district. That's why Jason agreed to meet me in the morning to take her right. to school. New place in Grant? Yes, but it's a little closer. It's more closer to Ensley Center. If you know where that's at, I guess I don't know if you know that's at. Yeah, um, how far are you from Mr. Uh, Tyler's house now? By uh, Probably by? about 45 minutes. And how far will you be after you move? Uh, maybe 35. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else, Mr. Van Hubel, you want to present today? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Uh, Ms. Ballast, any uh, rebuttal witnesses? Anything else you want to present? I do not have any rebuttal. All right. Um, do you have a closing argument? I would like to let the court be aware that my client brought this motion in good faith with deep concern about how the child has been monitored under the mother's care. Uh, he was also concerned about the mother's inability to provide transportation on a timely basis for the child, and she's consistently sleep deprived. But since we were limited in this hearing to testimony strictly about the allergy condition. I did not include that with my testimony, uh, but I think the court could also simply be aware that that's been a burden uh, between the parties for some time now. And that having a change to the parenting time schedule would be in the child's best interest and that it can facilitate an equal co-parenting relationship with both parents. And that due to the school enrollment that the parties have agreed to, that is also continuing to be in the child's best interest. My client could provide for that and make sure that the child is available to Miss Wise on a regular schedule. So if the court would like to modify the parenting time schedule to allow for that to happen so that the parties can still have a roughly equal parenting time schedule throughout the year, not just the school year, I still think that that's highly possible. And my client is willing to continue any other orders of the court that the court would entertain for continuing of this situation, but he still has sincere concerns about the mother's ability to monitor the child's allergies. At, at one point, uh, he was concerned enough to be here in court and make sure that the evidence that he had was presented. And that's no small feat uh, to, to be that concerned. Um, and so I wish the court would address this. I would also note that the timing of some of the exhibits presented by Ms. Wise are suspect in the fact that they all seem to correlate around her knowing that this potential was 
being considered by the court. And so she cleans her house, does these things, presents exhibits that make her house look like this wonderful sanitary place when she doesn't present what it was like before. So I'm I'm concerned. I think the court should be concerned as well and that the court would entertain modification of parenting time based on a change in circumstances. The court limited testimony today uh, in, re in reference to this. We previously discussed the transportation issue at the last hearing. The transportation was stipulated between the parties at the request of the defendant so that the child could be closer to him and facilitate going to school with him. Uh, we didn't cover that today. The court directed us not to go over that. It's been raised in closing arguments, but you know that was by stipulation of the parties through the last hearing, which was entered with the court. And we did not discuss that today with great with intentionality. We have covered um, we have covered that there is really no material change. Uh, there is no change of circumstance here. The um, child is obviously being carefully cared for. Both parents are doing so. I'm very glad for the child's best interest that that's occurring. They're both taking steps to maintain a clean and tidy homes and. My client's testimony was she maintains she maintains uh, cleaning. She has vent filters in her house. I mean, I've never even seen vent filters to be honest with you. It's a floor vents, a wall vents. She also has uh, re, uh, been changing the furnace filters. She has um, uh, HEPA filter. She has device. She has I'm going to blank on the, the uh, name here. She has HEPA filters in almost every room running in air purifiers, including her daughter's bedroom and in every other bedroom in the house, in the general house. She is been, she cleans, she dusts, she um, takes washes of the bedding as required. If we look at the court exhibits, the doctor um, uh, in exhibit F tells how to do that. She's doing those things. She's doing what the doctor orders to her. There were, we asked a comprehensive question, what, you know, what has been going on with this child since uh, March of 2021. We have several visits. We have a, uh, an ear infection. We have a runny nose uh, situation related to a cold, not to the ch child's allergies. Neither party was able to testify that where there were any other circumstances related to the initial discovery of allergies or any other um, medical evidence that is from a medical professional other than the exhibits that we entered um, that were covered here in exhibit D, E, um, F, and um, G, which were all admitted by this court. The court seen pictures of the, the, the home and the child's room. He has not been in the home. The defendant has not been in this home by admission for the last five years. He has no knowledge that there's any, he's not been inside. That's been his testimony. My client's testimony rebuts that testimony. It's based on personal knowledge. He does not have anything other than a mere naked allegation with no substantial proof of any kind. The, um, the parties, uh, the testimony was that my client communicates clearly. I think you can see from her earnestness in her demeanor when she testifies to the court, she's on it with the medical things. She doesn't wait. She reacts and takes the child immediately for medical care. She is what we would probably I would define as a good parent. She reacts, she sees a problem, she takes, she takes very careful care. Here's the other interesting piece. You've got a child who has all these allergies who is participating in, in activities that are clearly, swimming is a clearly vigorous activity, a whole body activity. Um, you're doing some pretty heavy breathing if you've done swimming before. I have, and I know, um, and with ballet, um, again, I have some contact with my uh, with one of my siblings that ballet is a fairly rigorous activity as well. Standing on your toes and doing the exercises for that, she's, she's working out. We've got, and I'm happy to report this, a very healthy child with no sign of any issues that's participating actively in activities. There's been no other evidence presented whatsoever that there's any kind of problem here whatsoever. They both have dogs. They both take care to make sure that the dogs don't impede the, the child. We simply have no evidence, zero, that there is a change of circumstance here, any kind of change of circumstance here. And as the court clearly stated in the beginning, the burden would be clear and convincing. I can't think of one shred of evidence in this petition that has any merit whatsoever. Um, and as such would, would qualify as, um, I don't know if it's to harass, but it's clearly frivolous. It doesn't have any good factual basis whatsoever to go forward with us. This, the defendant had knowledge of this. Um, he has knowledge of the medical things. He's clearly aware of his testimony as he's aware of these things. 
Um, not so much aware of the runny nose, the ear infection. He was kind of foggy on that, but the, what was going on with treatment. He, know the, he has no evidence other than you're not taking good care of my child. Well, what? What's, what's that? I asked him, you know, what? What, you know, what? There's no what. And when there's no what, then we don't bring a petition for change of custody that's due by clear and convincing evidence when you've been sharing joint physical. What, what? I, I just don't see it. And so I would say, you know, and it is a burden because my client is a single mom. She does have other children in the home. This is not an easy road and she's doing exemplary. She's taking, she's obviously engaging this kid, uh, her child, their, the party's child in sports and other activities, child's in school, she's transporting. She is doing, and she's trying to agree. You know, the fact that she moved the child 45 minutes away so that they could share a joint physical, I think says something good about her cooperativeness. I would, um, and I think that's, I think the court can see that, that, you know, through the, through the written orders of this court, they can see that the part, she has attempted to work things out and make this a, a good co-parenting relationship. I would ask that this petition for a change of custody be dismissed and that attorney fees be awarded in this matter. Thank you. If I could briefly in rebuttal, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Uh, first of all, this petition was not advanced in any bad faith. Second, Mr. Bannon Hubel has not presented any evidence about what attorney fees have been spent, the amount of attorney fees, the rate that he charges, or the reasonableness of any attorney fees. So there is no reason for a sanction against my client for a frivolous pleading. Next, I would address that Mr. Tyler is the one who's paid for dance lessons, who's paid for swimming lessons, who's made sure the child stays involved and stays active. I don't think that Ms. Wise has uh, any knowledge of what the cost of a dance lesson is, the sign-up fee for swimming, the cost that Mr. Tyler has put forward in addition to the child support order, which he is completely current with. There was no attempt to advance this motion in bad faith. And what we are trying to do is make the mother fully wide awake about the seriousness of the child's allergy conditions. And if that was successful, then we've achieved our goal because if both parents are communicating about the child's health, that's fantastic. But what happens is that Mr. Tyler seems to be a very diligent parent who's making sure that the mother does these things when she seems to be vacillating on the necessity for care. The reason why Mr. Tyler has not been present inside the mother's home for five years is because she refuses to let him inside her home. The last time he was there resulted in the photos that were so strongly objected to by Mr. Vanden Heuvel, where the conditions were extreme, not hoarder-like, but borderline uh, insanitary conditions with multiple children living there. Mr. Tyler is also a parent to another child. So to say that this is a burden to one parent only is unfair and mischaracterizes the situation of Mr. Tyler. He also has another child that he cares for. So this isn't like, oh, pity the poor mother at this point. And I, I just would object to that sort of argument from Mr. Vanden Heuvel. We brought this motion in good faith with deep concern about the child's health. Thank you. All right, uh, at this time I've heard evidence regarding the, uh, the, the child and the allergy issues. The school issue was uh, something that was not going to be considered as that uh, situation existed prior to the uh, last order. The parties agreed on an order that resolved that school issue and that was not going to be uh, moving this matter forward, this matter forward. The uh, allegations of the child's uh, medical conditions regarding her allergies, um, the, uh, it looks like the child had uh, appointments regarding that uh, over two years ago uh, to determine that she had allergies. The after visit um, summary was, was submitted uh, indicating she had uh, allergies to tree nuts and dust mites and dog dander. Um, I, I guess the parties both didn't feel that the dog dander issue was serious enough to give their dogs, but um, the, uh, the, the dog issue, uh, I guess, came with some protocols for keeping the dog out of the child's room and keeping the dog, uh, the dog or the dogs um, bathed and, and things like that. The um, condition of the mom's home though was the, was the main issue that was raised by, by the father in this matter. And there's nothing to indicate other than the pictures that were submitted what the condition of the mother's home is. Um, the, uh, there, there are no, I guess, there is no evidence presented by Mr. Tyler uh, regarding the mother's home being unfit or somehow um, a detriment to the child's health, um, other than maybe some knowledge of the condition of the home that he had from over five years ago. Um, the uh, pictures of the home currently uh, don't appear to be uh, too bad. 
uh, coupled with mom's testimony that she has uh, filters in each air filters in each room and that she also has a robot vacuum that vacuums on a daily basis. She washes the sheets and keeps the dog in the areas of the home where the dog is supposed to be, changes the furnace filter, has register filters that all appears to be pretty appropriate. Um, in the absence of any evidence to the contrary, I, I can only consider that the mom's home is, does appear to be appropriate. The only uh, uh, evidence regarding the child's condition and how it's affected by her allergies are, are pictures from a couple of years ago that were um, exchanged by the parties and were not complete representations of their conversations of what was actually going on. And we were given little uh, credence in this matter. It does appear that there were some rashes and things like that, but it was not able to be determined where those rashes occurred, if one party was at fault or the other, or either. If the child has allergies and is allergic to, to airborne substances, you know, she can incur that anywhere. So the um, only current uh, testimony that um, had to do with her health was that she, on mom's side was that she's healthy. She does uh, activities like swimming and, and ballet. On the father's side, uh, some testimony that she has a runny or a stuffy nose when, when she comes to his house. And that's certainly not enough to establish proper cause to consider changing custody. Uh, I would recommend that the order will indicate that the parties are to make an updated uh, appointment with, a, with an allergist both attend that appointment and see if her condition warrants any changes to the recommendations that have been made for her care. I think uh, I certainly would have uh, been doing that on a pretty regular basis if I was the parents. There's no evidence anyway that was uh, submitted that they've done that in the last two years since the first um, appointment. Um, that, that can be kind of a fluid thing that changes over time as Kids, uh, as kids age, their immune systems adapt and, and things like that. And I think it's only it's only reasonable that these uh, that these parents take the child to an allergist that she have an updated um, visit with the allergist, and maybe there will be some updated recommendations. Um, I guess uh, with that, the uh, motion to be denied, um, Mr. Vanden you, you can submit proof of your attorney fees, and, uh, and they'll be considered, and I'll do a supplemental order regarding that if uh, they are in fact warranted. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Anything else for today? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Should we all say good order?